Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to an actual video for once. But today, uh, guys, I'll be relaying the most important information I've learned playing 52 hours of Cube World. As a way to structure the video, I'll be using the most asked questions that I've received from the viewers of my streams of Cube World. My first question is, how do you level up in Cube World and what do artifacts do? In the beta of Cube World, the leveling system has completely changed from a standard XP system where you kill monsters into its own unique system. The new leveling system is split into two parts. First is gear based progression and second is artifact leveling. Gear based progression is fairly self explanatory but I'll explain it to make sure. Basically you find and equip more and more powerful items in your current region until you're ready to clear the dungeons in that area and move on to artifact leveling where once you defeat the bosses in your dungeons that are in your region you obtain an artifact that will improve one of your exploration skills. The exploration skills are as followed, climbing speed, swimming speed, diving skills, riding speed, hang gliding speed, sailing speed, and the light radius of your lamp. Some people are displeased with how Wale has changed the leveling system, but personally, I'm loving the way that you level up. It is very unique, and so far, I think it is a great system. My second question is, how do I find quests, and how do I do them? After years of waiting, there are now finally quests in Cube World, guys. And while I've implemented them fairly nicely, in my opinion, even though it might be hard. The way you discover quests now in Cube World is by going up to pretty much every NPC that you encounter and talk to them. Praying that they give you the location of a quest or an item. <sighs> so once you enter it down, I recommend you talk to pretty much everyone you find. I've learned this is the most effective way to complete regions as just running throughout them does take a long time. It does work, but again, it does take a long time. On to my third question. Do you like the region lock system and do you think that Wale should change it? First, for everyone who hasn't seen the beta yet, the region locking system is where after you've completed an area and gotten all the best items and completed all the quests, you move to a new zone. But now in that new area, your strong items now have base stats and you have to grind your way back to the top again. Sad, all right? Eh, that's only if you think about it that way. I've been hearing a lot of complaining about this system from many Reddit threads, and I, I've seen a few comments on Wale's tweets, but personally, I think this new system is great. You've got to get the right mindset about it, guys. It's not a reset of everything. You still have all the knowledge you've gained from playing the earlier regions, as well as having all your exploration stats higher to help you through a new region. Even better, you get the enjoyment of finding all new quests again, and items again! As well, being able to explore new landscapes right now in my streams, I just entered a beautiful biome that I never thought you could see in a voxel game. But remember, this is an exploration game, so this reset is an aspect of exploration. My fourth question, uh, what are specials? In the beta, you will come across certain places where you can find high rarity items, but you're not able to get to them because there's iron bars or there's a big golden door in the way, or it's a massive floating island and you can't get on top. Well, these are what specials are for. The specials consist of a hang glider, a boat, rains, divine harp, a sky whistle, spirit bell, treasure spirit, and climbing spikes. Things like the hang glider, the boat, and the rains, and the climbing spikes, they are fairly straightforward. But the Divine Harp, Sky Whistle, Spirit Bell, and Treasure Spirit, I'm going to explain to you guys now. So, the Divine Harp is used to open big golden doors on vaults and dungeons. The Sky Whistle is what you use at the bottom of those big floating islands, and there is a little statue, and if you go up to it and use the Sky Whistle on it, you'll get taken up to the top. The next is the Spirit Bell. If you see big iron bars that you cannot open, you can't walk through, you use the spirit bell and you're able to walk through them and you'll go, go get the treasure that's inside. The treasure spirit is honestly kind of the best one of them all because the treasure spirit shows you where everything is. When you'll be walking throughout the map, if you have the treasure spirit on, you'll see the little spirit <laughs> pop up right in front of you and you will see he'll be pointing where the treasure will be. And all you got to do is just walk with him over that way. Going on to my fifth question, how do you tame pets? The way that you tame pets in Cube World is through using a variety of foods that you find by killing monsters or doing quests. You can catch most monsters slash animals in the game as long as you have the food that they like. For example, you can use an eucalyptus candy on a koala to tame them. I was going to go into more detail onto this, but I thought I might as well do a full guide of how to tame all the pets. So this question is going to pretty much just 
stop here. But I will be making a guide on pets food. So, yeah. On my sixth question, how do you play multiplayer? Instead of using a server-like system like in the alpha, Walla has now switched to Steam, so it's a lot easier to play with your friends. First, you press J. Then find your friend on your list, and on your list it should say join or invite. Once you are in the same world with them, like once one of you is invited or joined the other, you might realize that you and your friend are really far away from each other. But what you do for that is you have to go to the nearest town, go find the flight master, and you can find him by looking for the man next to the eagle. But uh, yeah, you go to the flight master and you can teleport to your friend for free, and ta-da! You, you're playing with your friend. It's 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 not as hard as, as it should be. No. No, it's not hard. It's just not hard. <laughs> My eighth question is, how can you tell between difficulty and rarity? In Cube World, there are difficulty and rarity. Well, they're, they're shown the same way, both rarity and difficulty. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say them from the worst to best and easiest to hardest, considering they're both the same thing. So, white is the lowest. Green is that. is still low, but it's getting there. Blue is in the middle. Purple is, is better. And gold is the absolute best you can get. If you do not think you can memorize the colors or you're colorblind, there is an option to change the rarity from color coded to 1 to 5 stars, making it easier in the options of the game. How does each class differ from each other in Cube World? There are four different classes in Cube World Warrior, Ranger, Mage, Rogue. Each class can use up to three different weapons, each have a different move set, and each have a different play style. Also, they all have two specializations. Warrior has Berserker and Guardian, Mage has Fire and Water, Rogue has Assassin and Ninja, and then Ranger has, uh, what is it, Sniper and Scout, that's it. Uh, I, I want to go into more detail about them, but I see this is a personal choice that needs to be made by playing each character and finding the playstyle that suits you the most. So, I'm, I'll let you guys figure that out for yourself, because really, like, you really just need to try all the characters and see what you like, see which playstyle fits you the best. Finally, my most asked question, and the most important one. Is this game worth it? In my personal opinion, 100%, hands down, I think that this game is amazing, considering that I can usually never play a game over and over every day, especially from 5 to 11 hours in a day. I absolutely am hooked on this game, guys. The individuality of this game and how a voxel game can be so amazing and beautiful to explore is amazing to me. The leveling system, I love it so much, giving me the experience. Oh, it just gives me that experience of finding everything over and over again. And that might not sound okay, but it, I still, you still get that advantage from all your other stuff. It's not like you've completely reset, guys. Literally, it's such an amazing system. I'm loving it so much. But, there are a lot of varied opinions on the game, and currently, well, listen, listening to me and others could cloud your judgment. The only way you're going to find out if you love this game is if you play it. And that's all I can say on that, guys. You really just need to play the game if you want to know if you, like, are gonna, if it was worth your money. It won't be too much, it should only be around... I reckon the highest price it will go would be thirty dollars Australian. So, I, I I think I think it's worth it, guys. But again, it's your choice, not mine. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making it to the end of my video. If you did watch the whole thing, hello. <laughs> I really do hope that my list was helpful to you, uh, for when you guys start the game. Bit of a tiny little little little, little disclaimer. As the video was recorded prior to the actual release of this game, um, it, it might be a little bit obsolete, my information. He might have changed some things. He might have added some things. He might have taken away some things, making my info obsolete again. <laughs> so if that is the case, I will most likely be making an updated guide. And also, if that is the case, I'm sorry that I've given you false information. But thank you all for watching my video. If you did like my video, it, it, it was, and it was helpful to you guys. Please like the video. You don't have to, but it would, it would really help me if you guys do like the video. And if you want to see more of my Cube World content that I upload, subscribe and hit the notification button so you can see when I'm streaming next. Mostly streaming. Pretty much all I do is streaming. I will make another guide. Though. I will be making a pet guide. I did say that earlier in the video. 
But yeah, again, thanks for watching, guys. I really do hope that you enjoyed this guide. I really hope it did help. I'll see you all next time.